Well, welcome to the shop. We have a little bit to talk about today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that intro. It's been of a, a, a little bit of an interesting couple of months. In addition to building and working on other projects that you've been seeing on my channel, I have been noodling around with internal combustion engines. Okay, so... A while ago, <laughs> I was on the RC After Hours podcast, and I said I would never mess with that stuff. Really what spurred it on was uh, I had gotten a model. It was a Great Plains Escapade from another club member. And I, the, the club member had flown it on a 46, OS 46AX uh, uh, glow engine, and it just was so much fun to fly. He let me fly it. And he passed it on to me, and of course I made it electric, but I could never get it to fly as spirited as the Glow engine had. Uh, I tried multiple different motors, multiple different props, uh, prop uh, battery combination, and I just got so frustrated with the model after nearly an, a year of ownership that I said, you know what, forget this, I'm bored. <laughs> so I went ahead and put the Glow engine in it. After after two gallons of glow fuel, uh, I I said okay this this is kind of crazy because I had I had gone through two gallons of fuel on this airplane in about a month and a half, and for those who don't know, glow fuel is on average about thirty dollars a gallon. Okay. So I was flying the snot out of this plane, but it's also very thirsty. So my club member said, well, hey, I've got a four-stroke engine, this four-stroke engine, and, you know, they consume a third of the fuel, they sound better, they have more grunt, and I said, okay. So <laughs> uh, immediately I set to work uh, educating myself about uh, how to unseize an engine because uh, the engine was seized on the on the throttle body the uh, the crankcase was turning just fine so all I did was I set it uh, I set glow fuel in the carburetor overnight still wasn't unseized and then I used some carburetor cleaner automotive carburetor cleaner and that unseized it what that also did was uh, <laughs> reveal the age of this particular engine. The seals in the carburetor were old and leaking fuel everywhere once I got the engine running. It was completely, you know, just spitting fuel everywhere. So eventually I did replace all of the seals on the engine uh, and then I crashed it <laughs> and that sort of... Uh, uh, I guess it damaged the engine, but it was running a little bit rough before that. Uh, but then I had to completely disassemble the engine and replace the bearings. Again, there's lots of YouTube videos out there. If you want to get into this stuff, there's plenty of resources available. I'm not going to go over that. What I do want to go over is my conversion from electric to gas. In the course of getting this engine, the club member also let me use a 10cc RCGF. You can pick up this uh, this engine at Valley View RC, and lots of people have had been having really good luck with this engine. Uh, my particular club member said he could never get the engine running, um, so I had picked up a, a Hangar 9 Meridian, uh, and I had gotten it flying, and that's what you saw in the intro. Um, and sadly, the Meridian went in. Uh, the Meridian lost radio signal. Now, what I will say is that uh, glow engines and gas engines are different. What I have learned is that glow engines are completely independent, while gas engines require an elect electronic ignition module that does put out quite a bit of radio frequency interference with radios. Um, I had been using a, a, an old DSM-2 receiver. I know that people have flown gas engines in the past on DSM-2, but I knew that they had issues, and nobody else at my field was flying DSM-2, and nobody else was in the, even in the air at the time, and I just lost radio signal, and the airplane crashed. 
So uh, the engine is fine, uh, did break the spark plug, and I'm waiting for those to get back in stock so that I can replace the spark plug and maybe try the gas engine in something else. In the meantime, uh, same club member, <laughs> he's been a great resource, thank you Ron, uh, he sold me another airplane. Uh, this is the SIG... Um, uh, this is the SIG something extra and it's again it takes the same size glow engine and uh, after having the engine rebuilt with uh, new bearings it's been flying like a champ. What I will say is that uh, having a club and having a knowledgeable member of the club has been uh, an invaluable resource. If you have access to a local club with someone who is familiar with engines, it's worth your while to utilize that resource. Now, I have flown GLOW when I was a kid, and I did not remember anything. I was all self-taught. I was not a member of a club. So really getting the basics down on how to tune these engines was a bit of a learning curve. So. Uh, you know, obviously you want to, as, as much as possible on an unknown engine, make sure that you try to return your low speed needle valve to the factory position, which generally is a little bit rich. Um, and then once you get the engine running, first tune the high speed. Uh, you tune the high speed and then you, you adjust the low speed after that. And generally speaking, you don't have to change anything from there. Now I haven't had, uh, you know, I've been doing this since April and it is now August and I haven't really experienced much temperature change to where I would have to adjust the high speed needle, but generally that would be all that's needed. On a gas engine, should never have to adjust anything. Um, at this point, I am on my second gallon of glow fuel on the four-stroke engine. Again, it consumes much less fuel. However, considering the amount of flying that I've been doing and, you know, the, the cost is kind of, it's, it's kind of the deciding factor here. So for this particular size airplane you could easily go with like a 4s 5000 or somewhere in there you wouldn't want to really go much higher than that maybe a 5s but you're generally talking about a 40 50 dollar battery and i have now spent over 120 dollars in glow fuel <laughs> that's just in glow fuel um the gas is far, far cheaper, and it is uh, honestly about this size. However, because of the design of this airplane and how the engine is mounted, I would have to hack off a significant portion of this airplane to mount the engine in the proper location. Then I'd have to make room for a second ignition battery. You know, there's two batteries on gas planes. There's an ignition battery and a flight battery, as well as space for the ignition module to sit. So I haven't really considered that yet. Um, also, the gas engine is maybe a little bit heavier. It also requires a, a little bit bigger prop. Uh, as it is, this airplane is flying. It's a this is a Sato uh, 65 uh, FA 65, and currently flying on an 11.6 because all it's all I have. I would prefer a 12.6, but I don't have it. My current hobby shop doesn't have one, and I haven't really had time to order one. Uh, but that's what it was flying the escapade with flew great on on that prop the gas engine re would require uh, a 13 inch prop and i'm really cutting it close on ground clearance i would be cutting grass uh, on this particular airplane if i were to go that way but that being said the half or dozen so flights that i had on the meridian before it crashed were very good flights the airplane flies great. Um, I will note that another club member picked up the Meridian the exact same time that I did, and he flew it on electric, and it was fast on, on that electric setup, to, uh, so fast to the point where he was overspeeding, there was significant tail flutter, he lost control, and it went into the trees. Um, so we had, we had two Meridians in our club go down very close in time frame to each other, um, 
but nevertheless, I'm having fun. I'm trying something new. I'm learning along the way, and that's sort of why I'm sharing this with you. I've been known as an electric pilot for as long as I've been back into the hobby. I love my electrics. I love the scale effect that I have with them, but I am learning a lot from flying on the different fuel source. Uh, in addition to the tuning techniques, I'm also learning about a different kind of flying. It's so obviously you have you have the same kind of power that's that's comparable. However, managing the torque is a little bit different. So I'm used to uh, on my electric airplanes being able to just slam the throttle forward whenever I want to. Um, with the gas engine, not with the glow, but with the gas engine, I had to actually retard my uh, my throttle servo channel because my well, one of my club members said, "Well, you can't just do that. You can't just throw it because the servo is going to react faster than the engine." And so I ended up uh, uh, stalling the engine uh, on the ground, not in the air. Stalling the engine because the the there was delivering too much fuel at such a low RPM that it, it caused the engine to quit. So that was that was something I had to learn, but at the same time, there is a delay. There is a delay between the rotation of the internal combustion engine from low to high, as opposed to with electrics, it's instantaneous. So managing the power has been educational. It's been really teaching me about how an airplane can behave under different power systems. Really what it's teaching me as well is how to truly fly the airplane. I have been focusing a lot of my my piloting skills around uh, iMac, learning how to fly iMac, which is precision aerobatics. Just the basic sequence, I'm not doing anything fancy or crazy, I am, I am an average mediocre pilot. Uh, but it has been teaching me how to truly fly the airplane. And it's, it's amazing how much better and, and more proficient of a pilot I have become by doing so. Uh, not relying on the airplane's power to get out of trouble, but using skill as a pilot to do so. I mention this because of uh, a number of reasons, but primarily uh, for those who have been following the channel uh, for quite some time, you'll note that I have built many airplanes so far this year, uh, mostly as a result of our COVID situation. But regardless, uh, being able to have so many successful flights uh, amid these failures, uh, I, I attribute a lot of that success to understanding how airplanes fly a lot better. Maybe not, uh, you know, being able to explain it, but it's like riding a bicycle. There have been a couple YouTube videos and, and other studies done on how the human mind works and how we figure out algorithms about, like, how to maintain our balance, how to do things, uh, uh, these these gross mechanical things that we do with our bodies and understanding how an airplane flies, I believe is one of them and relying less on the power system to control the model and more about the airplane's aerodynamics itself. I attribute a lot of my successful flights recently to that. Some would argue that uh, the flight on the GB, <laughs> the maiden flight on the GB, was to the Aura system. However, I can assure you that I have flown the GB without the Aura system activated, and while it is a handful, it is not impossible to fly. Uh, the Aura system is an aid. It is just that, an aid. Uh, it takes a lot of the guesswork out takes some instability out, takes irregularity out. My field that I fly at is old farmland and it has uh, a tree border, really mature tree border, and we do have a mountain range off in the distance, but what what that means is that we get a lot of air variability, uh, not just in terms of air, air speed, but air temperature. 
So when I'm flying, sometimes the, the air is really warm and rising, and sometimes it hits pockets of cool air where it's falling, and there are ridges all over the field. And, and being able to fly through those unpredictable conditions has been a real challenge in the past. Not quite so much anymore because I've learned such a tremendous amount. Uh, you're managing a, a glow engine which is still running under power while landing is very, very different from landing an electric airplane with no power and the prop is just freewheeling while you land. It is a very different experience. You land much faster and you learn to control the airplane at a slower speed with power. And, and I, I just, I can't explain it any further than that. It is truly something you have to learn. It is a learned skill. And my, my, my hat goes off to those who, who do it so gracefully. My landings have improved. <laughs> But uh, uh, I think some of the some of the things that I have learned from this experience, I wanted to pass on to you. Enough of me rambling, uh, though. Uh, I'm going to continue to fly the the something extra here, and enjoy that uh, for the remainder of the flying season, along with my other airplanes, of course. Uh, I have a couple more topics that I want to touch on before we get back get back into the next big build and I hope you look forward to that it's going to be a fun one uh, so you're, you're not going to want to miss it so hit that subscribe notification hit the notification bell as well uh, and hope to see you back in the workshop very soon until then keep flying and maintaining and enjoying your flying works of art Oh, 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 oh,